So now in this next video on the idea of B cells, we're going to entitle the next flowchart B cells 2, and we're going to be specifically focusing on an event known as B cell activation. So basically we have to think of it like this. So we have these floating, these B cells, they're floating around, right? And they represent themselves in different forms, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgD, right? Those are basically going to be the different types of B cells that are within the body. But when do we need these B cells? When do they get the call to action? That's based off of the idea of B cell activation. We have to remember that if there's no pathogen, if there's nothing that's dangerous within the body, let's say, if there's no danger, in other words, does it make sense to activate B cells and make them do this very important job that we'll highlight in just a second? No. In this situation, and most of the time, B cells, therefore, are going to be in, in, in an inactive state. You don't want to waste resources. When B cells are in an active state, they are pushing out and really pumping what are known as antibodies. Why would you want to do that if there's no pathogen or no danger? Therefore, it's important to recognize that we have to make sure that the B cells are active when they're supposed to be and inactive when they're supposed to be. So let's get to the exciting part. Let's say that B cells need to be activated. How can they know to be activated? They're just cells, right? They must have some sort of signal, some sort of message that tells them, hey, there's a foreign invader, something might cause disease, let's get rid of it, what can you do to help B cells? So let's see what happens during their activation process. So we'll state that activation happens, so activation will occur when the B cell, BC antigen receptor, and remember this is just the B cell antigen receptor, are, is just the B cell receptor, the, the tips of the Y in other words. Remember the Y tips that we drew before, that's where the antigen is going to bind, that's the specific binding site for antigen, therefore that's the specific area at which the B cells will possibly be activated. So there's going to be an activation when the B cell antigen receptor binds to antigen. So there has to be something there, some sort of protein or large polysaccharide type of structure, piece of a pathogen that binds to the B cell tips of the Y region and that causes the B cell to say, hey, this is weird, this is foreign, this should not be here, I need to get activated, I need to turn on. That's exactly what happens here. Because now what we're going to do is that this overall activation leads to a totally new idea now. It leads to the formation of a B cell that's not only activated, but that when a B cell is activated, that means that it's a B cell that does the following. A B cell that secretes, this is a big word here, that secretes a soluble form, a soluble form of its receptor. What receptor are we talking about? We're talking about that Y-shaped, originally transmembrane receptor that was bound to the membrane Guess what's going to happen now when a B cell is activated? That bound receptor is no longer going to be bound. This B cell is going to churn out tons and tons of B cell receptors, that Y-shaped structure, in a soluble form that can move around a, sol a solvent, right, like blood. So what we'll see here is that overall, in this stage of activation, a B cell, its number one job, once it encounters the specific antigen that it's util useful against, it secretes antibodies. We don't say that it secretes B cell receptors or it secretes antigen receptor. It's now called an antibody once it's in a soluble form. It secretes antibodies, which are otherwise known as AB for an abbreviation. And AB is the same thing as Ig, as an immunoglobulin. The immunoglobulin was the structure that was bound to the B cell originally as part of its B cell receptor. But once it becomes soluble and free-floating, the B cell is just churning out a bunch of those receptors in what is known as an antibody form because those receptors are now going to be floating around. They're going to be soluble throughout the body. So let's look at antibodies in a little bit more detail, just so that we can drive home this point of B cell activation. The number one sign that a B cell is activated is that it's constantly making and churning out and allowing antibodies to go throughout the body. Let's remember, antibodies are the same. They are the same Y-shaped receptor that we talked about before. They're the same Y-shaped structure as the B cell antigen receptor. There's nothing different about them except for the fact that they are now soluble, except for the fact that they are no longer membrane-bound. 
They are not membrane bound like the B cell antigen receptor. They are just going to now be constantly synthesized within the cell and secreted out so that they can do their job. In other words, they are now in a soluble, unbound, in a free floating form. And so what we notice about antibodies is the following. What's the big deal? Why should an antibody even be secreted at such a large rate upon B cell activation? The purpose of an antibody is the fact that an antibody, AB, is the structure that does the actual defense, that does the actual dirty work in terms of killing a pathogen or at least disrupting a pathogen's success within the body. Antide in other words, antibodies do the actual defense against pathogens. So pathogens will try to cause havoc, will try to cause disease and sickness, but antibodies are going to say, hey, no, 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 you cannot do that within this structure. I came from a B cell that recognized you. I'm a soluble form of the piece of the B cell that recognized you, and I'm going to bind to you, and I'm going to make sure that you cannot do anything. We'll talk more about antibody function a little bit later when we get into the specifics of immunity, but just recognize for right now that it's not the B cell. It is not the actual B cell doing the defense. The B cell is the place, sort of the center, at which you secrete a bunch of these antibodies, these soldiers that do the work. The B cell is just the captain that tells the antibody, or makes the antibody, makes the soldiers that go out into the dangerous open, the dangerous soluble blood, and find pathogen and try to disrupt and defend against pathogen. The B cell does not actively try to defeat a pathogen. It doesn't do a good job of that. It has these soldiers within it, known as antibodies, that do a great job of that. Therefore, let's remember that B cells, their job is to simply, constantly secrete antibodies. But remember, this is very, very contingent upon what? Upon activation. Only when a B cell encounters and binds to an antigen at its B cell specific antigen receptor, only then will it have the recognition uh, that the activation, the message necessary to say, hey, I need to make tons of antibodies against this thing that just recognized the antibody that's on the immunoglobulin that's on my plasma membrane. Let me make a soluble form of that thing that just recognized a dangerous substance so that those soluble forms can go out into the body and recognize them at a much better rate than I can possibly do. These are the soldiers of B cells, in other words. Please, please take a look at figure 43.10 to get a much better understanding of the specific antigen recognition that a B cell possibly can have in order to promote B cell activation. So that covers our initial look at how B cells function. What we're now going to shift gears towards now is the idea of T cells.